Differences of race, class, and gender make it hard for people to get along. How can we live in harmony? Paul tells the Galatians that through Christ, we have received the Spirit, making us heirs of God and bringing us into a community of oneness where human differences are no longer divisive. Today's key verse reads, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Galatians reflects more strongly than most New Testament texts on the conflict among followers of Jesus regarding whether Gentiles needed to follow all of the Torah or not. When we believe and receive Christ, God honors our faith and clothes us with his righteousness. Now that we are clothed with Jesus' purity, God no longer sees us without seeing his Son, and he accepts us. This makes us one in Christ Jesus. Paul teaches the Galatians that we are made acceptable to God, not because we fully understand the doctrine, but because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Greek word for put on, in duo, means to be clothed, wear, or dress. Their water baptism, being a symbolic expression of their acceptance of Christ, affirms that they have been indeed clothed with Christ. Believers in Christ are also Abraham's seed. Christ is the seed of Abraham, and being a Christian makes a person part of that seed, as well as an heir to the promise of Abraham. We are not just heirs, but also joint heirs to Christ Jesus. Paul uses three couplets to represent inequality, the first being ethnic, Jew and Greek, second, economic, bound and free, and third, gender, male-female. He states that all who, by faith, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ become one with each other. In a culture where Jews were a minority but viewed themselves as the children of God, freeborn Gentiles who joined the church were in a precarious position. For non-Jews who had abandoned their official cults, slaves who had no rights, and women who were second-class citizens, Paul's claim of unity is radical good news for the Gentiles, slaves, and women who joined the family of faith. It was previously difficult to approach God before Christ because knowledge about who God is was very limited. The available knowledge had to be accompanied by the discipline and guidance of the law. When Christ came, he fulfilled the law, giving us a parent-child relationship with God. Thus, we are not slaves under the law anymore, but children of God in Christ Jesus. Although the Jews were heirs to the promise, some of them were held captive to the discipline of the law and treated like children living under the watchful, caring, and protective eye of a steward. This, Paul contended, was necessary because Jesus Christ had not yet come. But after the coming of Christ, believers were no longer under the law. By faith, God adopts believers through Christ, making them his children. God did not stop there. He also sent the Spirit of his Son. Every believer has the Spirit inside, bearing witness that they are a part of God's holy family. The privileges of a son versus those of a servant help to illustrate the difference between having a relationship with God through the efficacious death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and trying to be righteous by obeying the law. The difference is quite clear. The death of Christ and saving faith brings a believer into the family of God as his adopted children who have an inheritance. As servants, we were not part of the family and did not have any privileges. Here's our lesson. We should celebrate our commonalities when we encounter others in the faith. God has chosen to make us his children by faith, and this is worth celebrating. At the same time, how do we recognize and celebrate our unique ethnic identities. Let's ask ourselves, do I treat every believer in the faith as my brother and sister in Christ? Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.